through the carbonate, that's how I got free. Jump it back off because there's no stopping me. Postmodern player, sample tastic, flows it frastic. I get drastic. Hey, watch the plastic. Yo, I name check and leave you drastic. Welcome to the MacGuffin, episode 171. I'm Spencer. I'm Greg. Today, in honor of the release of The Dark Knight Rises, we're going to be talking a little retrospective on mm -hmm. Batman. The Batman. Uh, I can't speak for you, Good. but as you a can. semi non comic reader, mm. uh, mm -hmm. Batman has always been my favorite character. I grew up, I think, I mean, there's some serendipity to it, some. Uh, aspects of the character like i love bats when i was a kid and mm -hmm. so it was sort of like natural like there's a dude who dresses as a bat gotcha, that would yeah. be awesome and so like i definitely i grew up i mean batman the first tim burton movie mm -hmm. came out right when i was a kid so it was it's always been right at the appropriate places in terms of yeah. my development that i really loved it like i was just too old to really be right there when all the superman movies were mm -hmm. hitting and mm -hmm. stuff like that plus so. he's just a overall and appealing character because mm -hmm. it's both a hero that's a total norm normal mortal man doesn't have superpowers or anything like that and yet he also is somebody that rides the line between good and evil He's no kind of I, a, and i think that's one of the things i like most is that yeah. he he is sort of in, uh, dealing with that gray area all the mm -hmm. time plus he is a mortal man like mm -hmm. he i mean he i mean you can say he's like the world's greatest yeah, detective yeah. all that sort of stuff you <laughs> oh, know <yeah. laughs> uh, wealth like mm -hmm. iron man whatever but he's i mean he at his core he's not invincible like he True. is like i mean phoenix jones in mm -hmm. theory is like batman much mm. much poor and mm. not as as good in a lot of mm. areas but in theory they're mm. <laughs> they're based on the same concept uh, oof yeah that's a stretch but i don't work endorse necessarily that that comparison but i will say that yes he's a good character um we're gonna do a quick little background just mm -hmm. to sort of set the stage on in terms of who batman is batman was created by was it bob kane yes. and bill finger mm -hmm. um first started in was a detective comics yeah. in number 27 may 1939 you know it's it's one of those guys who sort of created as a gray character, mm -hmm. as a non-invincible yes. superhero that was sort of the initial initial lure, hook, mm -hmm. or whatever with Batman. The vigilante. The vigilante, exactly. Mm -hmm. I mean, and he became so popular early on that he got his own series mm -hmm. pretty quickly there. Mm -hmm. And, you the know... Silver Age of comics. Yeah. You know, it's one of those things that his, I mean, much like a lot of old comic heroes, his origins and whatnot have morphed and twisted mm, a lot over time. slightly, and obviously his look. But at the core of it, he is, you know, the son of a billionaire family mm -hmm. whose parents are murdered yes essentially in front of him yes and that when he's like nine yeah and that scars him mm -hmm. to an immense degree that he decides ultimately as he grows up to become a vigilante yes. and ultimately to track down the originally it's to track down the killer of his parents but then it becomes bigger than that yes. as he goes on since he's also a billionaire so he gets all has all the money mm -hmm. for all the gadgets and so, you know, it wasn't until the early 60s where it started to transition medians. Mm -hmm. um, and in 19, in the 60s, Ed Graham Productions optioned the rights to the Batman strip, um, looking to do a juvenile adventure show like The Adventures of Superman and The Lone Ranger. And uh, ultimately, negotiations between CBS and Graham, Ed Graham Productions stalled, and they the deal reverted, I believe, back to DC at that point. Mm. And then they sold it to ABC, who ultimately partnered with 20th Century Fox to create the series that gotcha. we all know and love. With Adam West. With Adam West. And, you know, it was the writers, let's see, Stanley, Ralph Ross, Stanford Sherman, and Charles Hoffman, hmm. who were given the task of writing the script, and they generally leaned more towards campy comedy, mm -hmm. and yeah. that was sort of what spun the series in yes. the direction that it ultimately went, and that was the Batman series that started in 66, mm -hmm. and we're not going to really talk about that, we're going to more focus on the Batman 66 movie that came out, which yes. originally was supposed to uh, come out before the series to generate really? buzz in the yeah. series, but um, Interesting. I believe ABC or sorry, um, Fox refused to sort of fork over the mm. budget to it, and they ultimately ended up making it right at the end of the gotcha. first season. It was sort of the bridge between seasons one and two. I see. And the thing that was... <laughs> the fat shark repellent? Yes. <laughs> one of the things that was notable in terms of this was that it was sort of... 
I mean, I guess you would say it was the opposite of the Avengers and sort of a precursor to a lot of the later films and mm. that it had, I believe, four of the super villains all together uh, in yes. one movie. It had, you know, let's see, Joker, Catwoman, Penguin, Riddler, <laughs> all in one sort of film, which mm-hmm. is sort of like the anti-Avengers, if you will. Yeah, uh, bad, bad guy Avengers. Yes, the bad guy Avengers. Masters of evil. And, you know, obviously this is sort of the era of Batman... Com- campy comedy, mm-hmm. pow, whack, yeah, smack. The sound effects and, drawn. And, you know, in a lot of ways, that was a very dramatic change from the original stuff. The original mm-hmm. stuff was mm-hmm. more, you know... I mean, it's it's still lighter than what it, a it lot of stuff is. It speaks to the time and television sure, at the time sure. of the 60s, clearly. And what are, what are your feelings about that original movie? It, it's so silly. I mean, obviously, this is also Adam West, yes, Batman, that yes. we're talking it's about It's so here. silly. Like I said, the bat shark repellent... Um, Batman running with a gigantic cartoonish mm. bomb, in- including the long cartoonish wick. I mean, it was basically like a live action cartoon. And you know, that's pretty much what it what it was. Oh, totally, point, totally. You know? <laughs> and it's funny to me because when I was growing up, I mean, I don't know if it must have been like Nick at Night or something at that point because mm. I, I mean, I saw the show when I was mm-hmm. younger. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what kind of rerun setup they had at that yeah, point. Yeah, what syndication it was on, but. I, I mean, I definitely enjoyed it as a kid. There, I mean, as I said, you know, I, I love bats as a kid. I was very interested <laughs> in the idea of, like, you know, the regular person superhero. I mean, mm. I'm sure every little kid aspires to be a hero or whatever at some point. That's what they hope. That's what they hope. Mm-hmm. But uh, Most of them might just end up podcast <laughs> hosts. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Glamorous. <laughs> <laughs> and yet, you know, it's it's one thing sort of considering where it went probably mm-hmm. ultimately goes more towards where a lot of people are at now mm. in terms of uh, taste. Mm. But for the time, it I, I mean, I think it was very fun. I enjoyed it a lot. I mean, it didn't have the resonance that it does now. It was much more... Um, soft and fun and yeah. light and campy. Yeah, campy I mean, is such a good word for it. It's but, just, it, I mean, they also... Soft I mean, felt colors. I mean... It was, it was sort of meant to be, you know serialized Mm -hmm. like strip ish type television where everything was a cliffhanger waiting up to the next episode will the cape crusader live and I believe that's where that whole cliche began Uh, the cliffhangers no originally is well I'm not saying that where the cliffhangers began but that whole like will the cape crusader live to see another day probably yeah Yeah. like it was like and it's such a stereotypical thing that it I mean mm-hmm. it's locked in my memory at yeah, this point. Yeah, stringing but, the people along like that. But nevertheless, I mean I thought it was a lot of fun. I mean the characters were I mean, And what it did is it brought I mean you know at the time comics were still not so widespread that this mm-hmm. brought the character more into the public. Oh, absolutely. I mean I think yeah. very much so. I mean yeah. in terms of like in the same way that the Superman television show did. Well, I mean way back when. Yeah, I mean, you know, let's see what was it? Superman uh The Adventures of Superman. Yeah. I, I I mean, these things were relatively popular, but I don't think they've nearly stood the test of time of Batman 66. Oh, no, no, no. I mean, Batman 66 is much older anyway. But also, I mean, you just think about Mm. people still know. I mean, shit, they they made a porn parody of Batman 66. That's still how popular it is in people's (laughs) consciousness. It's because Adam West is still around. Well, I don't. I, thank God he was not in that. Like, <laughs> or was he? I I have not watched it. That is true. But uh, I have to ask Kevin for the research. Back room. Um, he has it. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Or the Justice League. I don't even remember. Does One it of matter? Them. It Probably doesn't matter. Not. Moving on, we're gonna jump a couple decades forward to. Mm-hmm. Ah, you might argue. One of the most significant periods of mm. Batman's history, and that yes. began with the the eighties, eighty nine Tim Burton Batman reboot. Definitely. Um, both enter the black leather gothic Batman into yeah. the public yeah, I mean, even though it already exists obviously in the comics sure like, I mean this post is Frank Miller and all that yeah stuff. this this is what I saw first and then to see 66 later chronologically in yeah, my I life mean, I was so confused you might be right what. I might I might I don't remember which one I actually saw first I remember this coming out of the theater mm-hmm. and being very excited about it and having a friend who was like I mean I was like seven when this came yeah, out yeah. but I had a babysitter who told me about going to see it like opening weekend mm-hmm. and how awesome it was and I think I actually saw it in the theater. I remember friend, because a friend I was so excited. Batman everything. Yeah, yeah, I was probably a lot like your friend there. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, in terms of the gothic sensibility, very mm-hmm. much Tim Burton's 
classic style. Mm -hmm. I think Danny Elfman music. I think. Oh yeah, fantastic. I mean, this score. That I mean, one of the things that Batman has done fantastic through everything is mm -hmm. the music. Yeah, I mean, that's Christopher true. Nolan's been great. Mm -hmm. Tim Burton's great. Even the the '66. Da na 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 na. Yeah, the I mean, classic. Batman. So so memorable. All mm -hmm. of them are memorable. Dun, 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 I bet dun, there's dun, even memorable dun, music dun. in the Schumacher one. Yeah, I mean, even just taking the Elfman stuff that yeah. carried over. I yeah, mean, so. yeah. <laughs> but I mean, this is, uh, you got Jack Nicholson as the Joker. Mm, uh, yeah. And I was, we, we uh, Kevin and I from the mm, back room mm -hmm. recorded a roundtable discussion about the Dark Knight Rise. And one of the things I noted during that was, you know, when I went back to rewatch the Dark Knight um, mm -hmm. before the Dark Knight Rises, I yeah. think that's what I was saying. Um, it and the original Batman have sort of polar opposite hmm. um, setups in that the. Original Batman film from Tim Burton is all about the Joker's creation and uh, all that yes. stuff, and very brief flashback to Bruce Wayne's parents' yeah. death. And The Dark Knight is essentially all about Batman, with essentially nothing about the mm -hmm. Joker being known. Yeah, so and him being pulled into it in the same yeah. way that Batman is. And Kevin's theory was that you know when you have somebody like Jack Nicholson who's going to chew up scenery, you mm -hmm. let Jack Nicholson do what all he wants. And that's totally that's, true. I mean, yeah. I think it was one of the richest contracts in film hmm. history. I mean, he was given, like, yeah. merchandising rights and back. How do you try to tell Jack stuff. Nicholson that Michael Keaton's going to be the center stage and he's going to not? I mean, <laughs> and it's sort of, I mean, it won an Oscar for art direction, which mm -hmm. makes sense because it was, it was phenomenal mm -hmm. at the time, especially. And, you know... Tim Burton got the project after the success of Pee Wee's Big Adventure, strangely mm. enough. Yeah, I always and forget that that's... He worked yeah. on it for years, but it wasn't until the success of Beetlejuice that he actually mm. got the film Greenlight. Mm. Greenlight. Interesting. Yeah, so, uh -huh. you know, uh, I mean, I still have very fond memories, oh, at yeah. least for the first two Batman. I still think Michael Keaton is one of the better Bruce Waynes. Oh, he's great. And can you believe that there was an actually a campaign, a writing campaign to block him from being Batman. I think hmm. something like 50,000 people wow. wrote into it. And you think back I mean, now and he's great. I think back yeah, but I can also see at the same time just thinking like outside of those movies being like just from looking at Michael Keaton being like Michael Keaton Batman, I don't see it. Oh yeah. I mean it's yeah. it's a fa it's fair to think about, yeah. but now it's like he's so good oh, yeah. in retrospect that's like I can't even imagine. I agree. Like before Christian Bale, I couldn't even imagine mm -hmm. a Batman who wasn't him. Even yeah. even Adam West he displaced in terms of the signature yeah, I, Batman I would in my agree. mind. Specifically considering when I was raised Yep. <laughs> and so continuing on sort of this 90s renaissance mm. of Batman, in 92 we had Batman the TV series. Oh, Batman also, the no, animated series. Though, though, and I, I can't verify this because I haven't watched it recently mm. enough, supposedly at no point in any of the episodes is it titled Batman the animated series displayed. Hmm. Supposedly, it's just uh, Batman, it's just Batman and, yeah. and in the uh, seasons three, four, and five, it was the Adventures of Batman and Robin. Hmm. So it's become known as Batman. The I think animated it's because series. it's called Batman, and there was a Batman movie, and right. it'd be Batman the movie, Batman but the I'm, animated series, and people just. I'm pretty sure, like all the DVDs and stuff, have since adopted Batman hmm. the animated series, etc. Interesting. Because I mean, that's what everyone knows it as. Local colloquialism. And I mean, this or not local, but colloquialism. Still. Yeah. This sort of set a new standard in terms mm. of, you know, television and whatnot, because... Drawn on black paper. Yes. Uh, Bruce Tim got to give a lot of credit mm -hmm. to him for stylizing all... Mm -hmm. This is the the rise of Kevin Conroy as the voice of Batman, oh, which yes. has become such a signature voice mm -hmm. in terms of the... In like, some, the like the Mark Hamill Joker. Yeah. In fact, some of the... Some people think that their voices are what they associate with Batman more than anyone else. Yeah, I, mean, I, I would agree. Because, I mean... If anything, Christian Bale's knock, it's been but, his, his Batman But if voice. anything, it's, you know, the raw uh, t amount of time hearing him as Batman. Because if you think, how many seasons did that show have? Three, 85 Three, 85 episodes. episodes. You're thinking 22 minutes an episode. That's a lot of time with one guy voicing the same character. Yeah. So that's more than... Even that, with how long they are, all three Christian Bale Batman movies would not probably be runtime as long as those 85 episodes. And you got to also note that if it weren't for this series, I probably wouldn't be familiar with a lot of the villains in oh, the man. Batman universe. Oh, I mean, yeah. Scarecrow I never would have heard of. Ra's al Ghul I would never yeah, heard of. so good at pulling all um, the uh, villains and side characters. And totally. I mean, just, it sucking them in and giving them all it made them amazing i think mm -hmm. even more so than the 66 series it created yeah. a whole um because everybody was so stylized catalog of villains yeah. and 
everybody looks unique. Every and if, character. If there's anything you can say about Batman, I think he has the best rogues gallery of any <laughs> hero. I mean, maybe as Spider Man a, is in the conversation. As far but, as a single hero, yeah, yeah definitely. And like yeah. Not, not just like the widest <laughs> variety, but the best. I mean, you've yeah. got the Joker at the top, who is arguably the best villain, along yeah. with Lex Luthor, mm -hmm. and then you got all sorts of sub people like Riddler, Penguin, mm -hmm. just insane um, Scarecrow, yeah. Two Ghoul. Face, yeah. And you also got to note Voice that this 90. was. Uh, the creation of people like Harley Quinn were created for the animated series. Yeah, I always forget that that's that's so crazy for me to think that that was she's in, so, invented for it. Yeah. She's almost like unforgettable mm -hmm. as sort of Joker sidekick at this yeah. point. Sort of like, I mean, she obviously fits not so in the personally, movies, but... like mentally with your pers with the personification yeah, of the totally. Joker that you you just assume. Yeah, absolutely. Um, got also noted that it won an Emmy in '93 for outstanding animated program, which. I think mm -hmm. it was well deserved. So awesome! I mean, such an from the from the beginning intro of that. Even now, the beginning intro of that show, uh, I get emotional. I have an totally. emotional response. Yeah, totally. It's, it's great. dark and it's awesome and it's noir and it's really it's, well I mean, done. That's I one mean, of the thing that Batman's done God, through all so of them stylized. so well. Is yeah, you know, sixty six was stylized, mm -hmm. Tim Burton stylized, oh, animated series stylized, mm -hmm. B uh, Nolan stylized, uh -huh. and. It's one of those things that they've done so well throughout the series, and I would argue that this is largely influential for the rise of DC Comics animated success, mm -hmm. where they've yes. destroyed Marvel yes. pretty much. I mean, you could argue Marvel has much more of a live-action success at mm -hmm. this point, but in terms of animated success, yeah. they've just destroyed them with yeah, their animated they, movies. Yeah, they've got they've they've basically found a stylized uh, art style like the Batman cartoon had in the sense where it was like different enough looking that everything looked unique and you could make outlandish comic book characters look like they still fit in the universe without it looking strange. Yeah. You could just fit them right into the totally. style, so. And the, I mean, the series obviously then led into the animated films, which mm -hmm. obviously then led to other DC ones. And the mm -hmm. one we're going to talk about quickly is Mask of the Phantasm, which yes. came out in 93. Mm -hmm. um, also, right at the height of the Batman cartoon being popular. Yep, right around the same time it won an Emmy. Mm -hmm. I mean, I believe Batman uh, Returns was right around 92 as well. Mm, yeah, I so I mean, right. this, I mean, Batman was massively mm -hmm. successful in terms of comic consciousness. Yes. At this point, I would say it really was probably like 80% of the marketplace or something. I mean, yeah. Superman was forgotten in the 80s. Mm -hmm. The 90s were spotted with little hit and comic yeah. films, but nothing nearly to the scale of Batman at yeah. that point. And Mask of the Phantasm sort of takes the Batman notion mm -hmm. of sort of a vigilante hero and puts another one in there, but one that takes it the next step and actually kills uh, criminals. Mm -hmm. And Batman sort of being blame for all these yeah. murders and he has to figure out a who this phantasm is yes. and b you know stop them from mm -hmm. stop them and the criminals that's one from of his few on. things in the batman code is that you don't kill yep i mean it's probably it's probably never really intentionally it i mean like i don't know what else you could really argue i mean beyond that that's no, pretty much, true yeah. like he, he that pretty, is the code you yeah. just don't kill which <laughs> is interesting enough but mm -hmm. um you know the original idea for this film was to release it direct to video which since has become DC's yeah model Bread and, and butter and, yeah <laughs> but ultimately they ended up doing like a quick rushed theatrical mm -hmm. release which ended up being a disaster yeah. and a bomb theatrically since then it's become a hit on video and it's 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 really good mm -hmm. I mean um, I wanted to see it in theater I remember wanting to but I don't think it came to my small podunk town mm -hmm. but it, I mean it's a really interesting notion to sort of take that idea of. Uh, Batman being up against mm -hmm. another vigilante in essence yeah. and sort of questioning morality and stuff like why well, he doesn't kill people, why the mm -hmm. vigilante does, stuff like that. Plus it's just neat after the, the even even though it's still going on, after having this animated series and using the same art style and the same voices to expand that yeah. universe Should know, with like, a new you know, character Kevin that Kevin Conroy was in this, mm -hmm. uh, Mark Hamill as the Joker mm -hmm. was in this. Yeah, just to take a new character that hadn't existed in that universe already and bring them in and let them do things that they wouldn't be allowed to do with the show based on time Time and you know budget etc etc and make a make a more grandiose version of it so then that you would be drawn back to the show I mean and, and, and hope that more of those would come out of it and since then there have been a, tons of movies like you want to note uh, Batman Under the Red Hood which mm -hmm. is very different visually had I believe Bruce Greenwood as Batman the voice of Batman mm -hmm. so, there have been a few different different ones Joker so. as well I don't yeah. remember who was the Joker it looked differently too he was like yeah. a big kind of steroid but I mean they, they've shipped it there another mm -hmm. one to note is Batman Return of the Joker which gained notoriety for being too violent in its original release that they had to mm. cut it down. Uh, I believe I've seen the the unedited version and it was not really that mm -hmm. bad. But for whatever 
reason. It was mm. like slammed by the MPAA and they had to cut it down to they're a lesser old fogies. One. Yeah, I mean, but you know, again, you know, that was a very good one as well. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, the animated movies yeah. have been very good. Yeah. You know, Kevin Conroy still my favorite voice, but agree. you know, even regardless of that, they've had some other good mm-hmm. ones. Yeah. Um so we'll move on to, move on to that. Uh wanted to talk about at least one of the Schumacher mm-hmm. ones and so we're going to talk about Batman Forever. Yeah. Um not frequently pointed out but at least i believe it was the beginning of the bat nipples which <laughs> yeah. gained most notoriety in batman and robin uh-huh. and this the is bat cock pieces cock pieces in and batman and robin i'm going to just state it right now um because you know i i hear so much about it uh, mm-hmm. on the internet and whatnot honestly i don't give a shit like it's really such a mundane little point like it's weird i'll give you that <laughs> but does it really distract me that much from the movie not that much no it's not the, it's like not they're the, like cock shots it's and not butt the shots and stuff that like yeah, are it, way more distracting for me it's more the fact that chris o'donnell took money out of his paycheck to enhance his card piece because this was smaller than batman's yeah that kind of stuff is cheesy and you know this is sort of the portion of uh batman where they really sort of skew back towards that many many villains in a movie mm-hmm. and, and it also really tried to get a little bit of camp into it but still maintain the oh, totally. darkness totally. And it totally yeah didn't work. It, it backfired on both ends like <laughs> it really like there's just way too many villains mm-hmm. going on like none of them really got enough screen time yeah. especially with batman and robin yeah like it was way too much going yeah. on there like they even had bane in that one mm-hmm. and he was I, like I a always joke forget. yeah <laughs> he, was, he was like a leech or lubre leech or libre Luchadore? Luchadore. Luchadore. Um, yeah, but he was like sort of like a joke version mm-hmm. of it. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, <laughs> th- I mean, there's so many people, you know, Jim Carrey as um, the Riddler, mm-hmm. uh, Tommy Lee Jones as Two Face, who they bought out Billy D. Williams' contract from the original Batman. Wow. Because he, he had signed on knowing that he'd eventually become uh, wow. Two Face. And. Wow, he would have been so. He might have been actually good. He Tommy Lee Jones was awful in that movie. He, I like Tommy Lee he was, Jones, and he was. Awful well, I think it's. I mean, I think because it was so over the top, anyone would have been bad. But I, I, it's sort of a little sketchy he, that they bought out Billy D. Williams' contract to give it to Tommy Lee Jones. I'm not saying that they did anything can't let wrong, the black but yeah, can't get, let the black I'm just saying it's a, li- it's a little uh, sketchy. Um, good work, but Schumacher. If you didn't like. Michael Keane enough. Supposedly, you know, he was in the contention to do Batman a third time, mm. but he met with Joel Schumacher and declined to join the project because he didn't like the direction it was taking. So, good on you for that. Thank you, Michael Keane. Also, briefly, should note that Tim Burton was actually thinking about doing the third film mm. for a while. Very briefly, but, you know, um, he was thinking about having only the Riddler being mm. the villain. I Which think that would have been, so been a much better, better film. Oh I God. think he A, if he had done it sort of gothic-y as he had mm-hmm. done before, and with just the Riddler, it would have been mm-hmm. a much, much better film. But, you know, Schumacher and Two-Face had to come in and ruin the party. Um, nominated for a couple Oscars, including cinematography, which becomes an ongoing theme, especially mm. with the Nolan Batmans. Yes. Um, but, nevertheless, you know, it's not... How many Razzies? I didn't, I didn't, I didn't check, actually. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, that would have been would Batman and Robin probably would have been yeah, more worthwhile. To much talk more about so, Razzies, yeah. but, you know, it's still nevertheless a very interesting mm-hmm. one to think about. Moving on, we're going to jump into the Nolan universe. We're going to cover all the Nolan films because Dark Knight Rises is mm-hmm. the end of the Nolan, yep. um, the end of the Nolan world. Mm-hmm. And, you know, got to start by saying that I initially, and I'll admit this, was sort of skeptical about Christopher Nolan stepping in to be the director of Batman. Hmm. I had very much liked memento Mm -hmm. but i didn't even really have a concept of who christopher nolan was Mm. before batman begins it was like oh the dude who did memento that's Mm. like pretty much what i knew him as now did you know much about the year one storyline uh no actually i don't think at that point i did i think i think after that came out i ended up buying it Mm. and going back and reading at that point i I mean i had a friend who had sort of mentioned it briefly Mm -hmm. to me and you know i i think in retrospect that's a great idea Mm. i think it's a brilliant idea but you know it was one of those things that even be sort of of like a parallel being Mark Webb getting Amazing Spider-Man. There was like a dude who came from an indie world essentially Mm -hmm. and given like, I think the budget was 150, 150 million dollars was sort of inconceivable to me that that guy (laughs) would be ready to basically take on my favorite character and I said this in in my review for The Dark Knight Rises which is online right now Mm. that, you know in terms of like you know trilogies and characters and everything, mm-hmm. like I like Star Wars, mm-hmm. I like Lord of the Rings, whatever. But Batman has always been much more sort mm-hmm. of 
a personal favorite to me because as I said, you know, my love of bats, my love mm -hmm. of sort of like the grayish character, yeah. all that sort of stuff. And so this has been a much more um, personal, personal mm -hmm. trilogy to get attached to, totally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I was worried about Reboot, especially after the two Joel Schumacher films. Interesting to note that, you know, if you didn't know anything about his movies, uh, Peter Jackson was a humongous risk for Lord of the Rings, and he did it amazing, too. Uh, Sometimes I mean, I, when you have a huge no, property totally. like that, you need somebody else. And, you, you know, know, you think in retrospect after, like, how great Memento is mm -hmm. and what he's since done. Yeah, and following, which is the short. The short's also very good. The short and the feature? Because there's a feature. Well, it's, it's I consider it short because it's, like, okay. 50 minutes. Okay. So. Um, but nevertheless... Um, you know, in retrospect, it mm -hmm. makes perfect sense in terms of style and whatnot. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's gone on to basically reinvent comic book movies mm -hmm. and films yeah. ever since his dark spin on it. But um, there are a lot of interesting things that we have to know about this. Uh, first up, he directed the film with no second unit. Hmm. No sort of B sort of camera shot. He okay. shot every single frame of the movie. All, let's see, 129 days of it was all Christopher that's Nolan. That's a lot of shooting. That's a lot of shooting, and that's a lot of attention to deal. There are a lot of little small side <laughs> shots that you could probably outsource, especially uh -huh. a lot of big budget films where they do, you know, second, even third units. Yeah. But to to spend all his time in doing it, that's yeah. that's pretty phenomenal. Um, got to note that Rachel Dawes' character, played by Katie Holmes yes. in this, and Maggie Gyllenhaal in the next one, mm -hmm. created entirely for this film. Interesting. And, I mean, it makes a lot of sense. Um, I was talking with Kevin that it sort of, in a lot of ways, is going to parallel the Amazing Spider-Man storyline going forward with, with Gwen, Gwen Stacy. Stacy. Yeah. And, I mean, that makes... Which is an actual character that does exist or beforehand. Right. That, that one that was, was in a great character. Yes. And I said, you know, in the Amazing Spider-Man round table, I, I liked her much more than Mary Jane. Mm -hmm. So, to yeah. take that and put that in Batman, freaking brilliant, if yeah. you ask me. Yeah. I definitely appreciate that a lot. Um this is also the film that Christopher Nolan began the practice of just going straight into the movie. No yeah. credits at all until mm, the end, mm -hmm. which I think is awesome and adds so much to the movie. Specifically, you know, beginning with The Dark Knight. Yes. I mean, this one, it the was IMAX fine, but The Dark Knight scene, yeah. and The Dark Knight Rises have the intro scenes. The, the Joker bank robbery scene mm -hmm. is the first one in The Dark Knight, and the plain prologue scene is the first one in the dark knight rises so those gotcha. two scenes are so intense mm -hmm. to jump into it's it's mm -hmm. like it's great credits take you out of it i mean grand the the score to the 99 batman mm -hmm. build up with the dan elfman theme was fantastic i love that build up mm -hmm. you know the dun 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 dun, 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 dun. Mm -hmm. it's great but i think just jumping right into the action like the dark knight just i mean i think yeah. it deserves in the top five opening scenes of all time and that was sort of in the discussion when we just did hmm. that on the site interesting yeah. yeah especially when you're trying to go for like drama and you know epicness doing something like that pulling you immediately into it it's a lot you know it's more immersive and it's really interesting to see that this was sort of the first real deep origin story that mm, they'd mm -hmm. done for Batman in terms yeah. of um, film and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And that was the only reason no one agreed to do it, because really? he wanted to explore, you know, the... Uh, let's see if there's a quote. Um, the world of Batman is grounded in reality. It would be recognizable contemporary reality against an extraordinary hero figure that arises. That's what, you know, Goyer said in terms mm -hmm. of what their vision was hmm. of doing it. And he only wanted... No one said he would only want to do the origin of a character which is a story that's never been told before mm -hmm. he, he didn't want to do something that had been rehashed that's good and you know so you have freedom to add stuff to it and change it in your own way rather than having to conform to some predetermined notion of the audience like no that's not how it goes where's lois lane when this superman story you know and one of the sort of classic batman mythos is that he was you know really obsessed with the was it zorro as a mm, kid mm -hmm. and that sort of helped lead him to become a hero and no one wanted that gone because mm -hmm. he wanted to create a world where there are no other heroes and it was an extraordinary step for batman gotcha. to do it i mean because you could say you know I like you if, yeah. if gotham were under siege like it was in the dark knight and the dark knight rises mm -hmm. superman would totally come Oh, and yeah. help out like there's no uh, question that saying, that would yeah. happen so he created a world where it doesn't exist and that's probably better going forward that they're rebooting it for things like the justice league because it would make no sense to be like oh suddenly yeah. there's superman and he just decided not to help doesn't out during these necessary. other films. No, it doesn't mean it's necessary, but it makes more sense if you're <laughs> yes. going to do a Justice League movie this because no other heroes exist here. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I, in retrospect, I rewatched this twice before The Dark Knight Rises. I really, I really like this film. 
I think it's one of the best examples of doing an origin and mm. yet keeping it an interesting Batman film. Mm -hmm. I actually timed it. It's 52 minutes in before he's in a Batman type costume and it's huh. an hour in before he says he's the Batman. Hmm. So I, I think that's a good pace faster nice. than uh the amazing spider-man hmm. reboot did i think i think you got i mean for a film that people are already conscious of you have yeah. to get to that point yeah. faster and you Especially know with the, you know even batman begins the title I mean, yes you know. But they, I mean, his origin in, you know, Batman Year One, if you haven't read Batman Year mm -hmm. One, it's worth checking out. It, it really, really sort neat. of expands on what was in Batman Begins even a little bit more. Mm -hmm. It talks about Gordon's evolution as well, too, which mm -hmm. is really interesting. Because he's definitely one of the important sort of, like, I don't know if you'd even call him, like, somewhat of a father figure to Batman. Him and Ra's al Ghul mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in Batman Begins yeah. are sort of somewhat of father figures because he sort of you know they're both like uh different sides of the same coin which yeah is totally like the ones the complete corrupt everything for power and the other ones everything for justice totally totally you're so, absolutely right that's a yeah. great point uh the th point at which batman again sort of reconnected with that um success of the early mm. 90s mm -hmm. was with the release of the dark knight yeah. and part of that you're gonna have to chalk up to the death of heath ledger i mean that did generate some buzz to have that the Mm. I'm not saying it was positive or negative. I'm saying, you know, it, he died before the I'm film was the, released. I want to say the performance of Heath Ledger. Oh, definitely. That definitely yeah. grew, too. But even before the film was released, there was so much buzz about whether he'd finished all his filming, okay, yeah. filmed all his, you know, but that, I mean, that, pickups. Mm, yeah, but that's like saying that that's the only reason that The Crow was good is because Brandon Oh, no. I, I, I definitely don't think you can classify it just as that, but that okay. helped it generate buzz. Okay, I will agree, unfortunately, yes. It it's unfortunate, but yes. it really it really got... There's no such thing as bad publicity. Right. It got a lot of interest going in what his <sighs> yes. last performance essentially would be like, exactly. and that's it was phenomenal, which mm -hmm. then just amplified the interest in the movie like yes. exponentially i mean batman begins made like i don't know let's see 300 million four three hundred fifty million dollars worldwide and the dark knight made a billion dollars so it was like three times <laughs> as big particularly in the u.s i think of the top 20 films hmm. in uh the u.s grosses yeah in terms of like their worldwide that's my dark knight is the only one to make over 50 percent of its money in the u.s Wow. Yeah, which is really interesting. We like ourselves some Batman. Yeah, I mean, it's I, I upon rewatching it, I think it's such a beautifully structured film. I mean, you have the White Knight of Harvey Dent, mm -hmm. who's sort of Gotham's hope being dashed, and at the same time, Bru or, uh, Bruce Wayne, Batman, mm -hmm. has to essentially take on the villainous um, role, villainous role to keep everything in check because otherwise you know all of harvey dent's cases would be released mm -hmm. all this chaos would ensue and he is the only one strong enough to take that yes. load that burden and so that's the rise of the dark mm -hmm. knight and i think that white knight versus dark knight are a really interesting beautiful parallel and to have the chaos of the joker simply existing to be amplify the world chaos to yeah. a certain and, extra level and this is sort of one of the things i thought about in terms of the dark knight rise and we can get more into that as we go there but you know i love the joker mm -hmm. and you know i was a little He's bit an amazing character i was a little bit um sad in that you know the joke the ultimately the joker isn't the ultimate villain mm, for mm -hmm. batman i mean he's sort of like an in-betweener almost mm. um but you know he's so good in this movie that i i mean and all of the films are so good that i yeah. really can't fault anything nolan did per se yeah but in the back of my mind there's just a little bit of uh, an attachment to the joker that was like I really wish he would have been the ultimate villain, mm. perhaps carrying over from two to three or something. Well, like it is kind of nice because isn't there like a eight year time yes. difference between two and three? Yep. So technically, you know, the Joker who may be alive at the end of Dark Knight is still out there, and for six of those eight years is Batman, the Thor well, Batman side. Uh, we'll get to that in a minute, <laughs> and sadly, that's not the case. Um, but you know, I think. I think the Joker was a perfect sort of, He is, in a lot of ways, the perfect nemesis mm -hmm. to Batman, who's all about order. Joker's yes. all about chaos. I, I mean, I think... Batman cares about life so much that that's his only real rule. Joker doesn't give a crap well, about Well, I mean, life. It's, it's also, you know, like, Batman's all about logic. <coughs> Joker's all about chaos. And that's one of the whole things that was one of the most interesting scenes when Michael Caine's Alfred is talking about, you know, this thief in the mm -hmm. woods that they're trying to hunt. Mm -hmm. And he would do all these robberies, but you just dump all the, the jewels and stuff mm -hmm. he found. And, and Bruce Wayne's like... How do you? How did you ultimately catch him? He's like, we burned the 
mm. bore us down ultimately do it. And that's yep. essentially what Batman has to do. Some to men catch. just want to watch the world burn. Exactly. And it was just, it's so phenomenal. It got nominated for, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Award, not Academy Awards, I believe. One nice. uh, best supporting actor, obviously for Heath Ledger, uh -huh. and best achievement in sound. Again, um, both this and Batman Begins were nominated for cinematography, yes. which Wally Pfister deserves oh, so well. I mean, his his visuals are one of the most gorgeous films, mm -hmm. bar none. Yeah, I mean, very very so grandiose lush. and. But detailed. it's it's. I mean, this was also sort of the point at which they started rewriting the rules of Best Picture nominees mm. because so many people were upset that The Dark Knight wasn't nominated for Best Picture. And why wasn't it nominated for Best Picture? Your guess is a good mind. Oh. It was it was a popular one. The critics was liked it. Something it. I don't like know. In a comic movie or something. Or Maybe something? I huh. just I don't know. I, I I mean honestly I don't think anyone's been able to propose a theory as to why. I mean, it was both a critical and commercial hit. So Thanks, I'd, stupid Hollywood. Keep yeah. your lip seal. It, it might have been something like that. Program. They thought they were too pretentious to do like a, a commercial hit or something like that. I don't know. It was weird. Um, again, I blame money. I'm just going to yeah. say money is the cause. Yeah. Uh, again, Christopher Nolan oversaw every shot in the film with no second unit. So, I mean, again, that explains why it's such a detailed, mm -hmm. precise little film. So exhausting. Um, Got to give a lot of credit to uh, Heath Ledger for his work as the Joker. Supposedly, mm -hmm. he locked himself in a motel room for six weeks to sort of perfect his vision of what the Joker was to delve into that psychology mm -hmm. and sort of differentiate it um, between his and Jack Nicholson's. That's awesome. And unfortunately, that might have in some ways helped cause the problems mm. that, you know, yes. create his insomnia that, mm. you know, led to a drug dependency that ultimately led to his death. I'm not going to say definitely A, B, A leads to C, mm -hmm. but, you know... Uh, a it, sad correlation. Yes, and it's, I mean, it was, I mean, you look at that role and you can imagine how mentally taxing <laughs> yeah. it must have been, so it doesn't seem out of the realm of possibility. Yeah, I, yeah, I would agree with that. Also want to note, this is the first Batman film without Batman in the title. Hmm. Taking on the Dark Knight, which is again one of the classic names mm -hmm. for him. You it's know, true. Cape Crusader, all these other yeah. ones have been names for him, but this is the first one without mm. Batman in the title. Still love Clever the film. Girl. Still love the film. Think oh, it's yeah. great, very well structured parallel thing. I think a lot of the, the problems people come up with it for it are a lot of really nitpicky type stuff. Mm. And I think overall it's just a phenomenal film that deserves yeah. all the praise it gets. Brings us to now this Friday, June twentieth, the Dark Knight Rises comes out. As you <sighs> mentioned, this takes place eight years mm -hmm. after the previous film. Yes. Um in essence though, this the end of the Dark Knight mm -hmm. is essentially the end of Batman. I see. I mean, that was they they say in the Dark Knight Rises that was the last time the Batman was seen. Mm. Since then, there have been sort of rumored visit viewings or stuff, but that was the last time he was seen in full sort of action. Gotcha. So my belief is that he sort of began to retire mm -hmm. as they they add some new laws and stuff to sort mm. of help. The, the police and it isn't until eight years later with the arrival of Bane that Bruce Wayne is really brought back into action a very haggard Bruce Wayne yes. at this point I mean years of crime fighting have taken, taken their, their physical toll, toll which yeah. is really interesting to see you know a lot mm -hmm. of comic films really never address that. address the yeah. issue of what it takes to you know take all these blows especially when you are a mortal man mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and this is um Christopher Nolan's the first director to complete a trilogy of Batman films, which is great. Um, wow, yeah, that's true. And it's the se he's the second director to direct a full trilogy of one superhero films after Sam Raimi. Mm -hmm. um, Much better finale already, or rather, already, already oh, than Sam absolutely, Raimi. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, without a doubt. <laughs> uh, supposedly Nolan picked Bane to challenge Batman because he would tax him both mentally and physically mm -hmm. and that's true and as kevin in the back room noted on our round table bane is in essence an extrapolation of what uh batman could have been if he had stayed with the league of shadows yes. and didn't have his moral code true like he he's a physically imposing specimen mm -hmm. he's, he's also super very smart yeah, very clever he's he's almost as equally a good detective i believe as, mm -hmm. as batman but he's also more physically overpowering yes. and this is i and i talked with kevin this is really I mean, possibly Ra's al Ghul, though he is older mm -hmm. than Batman. But this is the first time I would say Batman is physically overpowered. And oh, if yeah. you see 
like it's one thing to see the trailers with uh tom hardy but mm -hmm. when you see him in full effect on the imax he is terrifying he is a beast <laughs> like you know seeing awesome. him in war made me believe he'd be uh -huh. great but the, like he yeah he is even above and beyond I, like i don't know if he was taking steroids <laughs> to be in the movie but he certainly looks like it he's intense and you know, Tom Hardy described Bane as an absolute terrorist, saying he's brutal but incredibly mm -hmm. clinical in the fact that he has a results base and oriented fighting style. The style is heavy handed, heavy footed, it's nasty. It's not about fighting, it's about carnage. And you really get that impression of him, especially awesome. if you sort of look in the classical story of um Bane being, mm -hmm. you know, he was created during the early 90s in response to Superman's death. Yes. And he ultimately was the end of Batman and led to the rise of a character named Azrael yep. who took over from Batman mm -hmm. after he broke his back yes, in the after comics. Bro and broke Batman's back, you know, yeah. he he's a physically imposing character in this film as mm -hmm. well and you know, he's really quite intense. Mm -hmm. Um he's basically the only person to ever beat fully beat Batman. Yeah. No, totally. And, you know, it was, there was a lot of speculation after The Dark Knight that uh, Two-Face would be the main villain, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, Aaron Eckhart wanted that to be the case. Yes. But I think, you know, no one immediately shot that down. There's nothing of that in the film, so don't go in expecting it. Um, but, you know, I think he has to be dead to make The Dark Knight as powerful mm -hmm. as it was. Like, to the Dark Knight, the Dark Knight has to rise. Like, mm -hmm. you can't have... Um, Two-Face be a villain, because yeah. that ruins everything about Harvey Dent's credibility. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, also got it needs to be that villain that did that and then faded away. And also got to know, and this is sort of in response to your six years of Joker action, mm -hmm. you know, A, I think he's already retired basically before that, but out of respect to Ledger, they never mentioned the Joker in the film, hmm. which is kind of a bummer, kind of not, because, you know, whatever. But, uh, I mean, the film is phenomenal. There are little nitpicky things like, you know, I would have liked the Joker or whatever. Mm -hmm. Can't really do that since Ledger's dead. But yeah. um, for the most part, just a phenomenal experience. See it in IMAX if you can. There's about, I think, 70 minutes shot wow. in IMAX, so it really takes a advantage hmm. of it not in 3d too super positive about that yeah. i um, think i read a quote today by christopher nolan that said he doesn't know anybody who likes 3d <laughs> I, I, I mean i i hope i hope he seriously doesn't do it going forward i hope he doesn't get that no, pressure yeah, he but want to. um just a phenomenal movie i'll leave it basically as this i don't want to spoil it for anyone who's curious about Good. checking out but because i'll kill you if you spoils yes. it for me spencers yes. but for anyone who does go see it check out our round table you can check out the first half of it where we talk spoiler free mm. and then after you see it check out the second half which is spoilerific I, i'm very much looking forward to being able to actually talk about what mm -hmm. goes on because there's so much more to this film than a mm -hmm. lot of people imagine so it's, it's so much that you're just bubbling with totally bursting at the seams totally yeah. And, you know, like, talk about the end of the trilogy, all sorts of stuff mm -hmm, like that. Mm -hmm. It's it's going to be a fun one. So let us know your thoughts and uh, join us next week when we do our DVD roundup for the mm -hmm. week of the 24th. Mm -hmm. And, as always, you can find us at MacGuffinPodcast.com, Twitter.com slash MacGuffinCast, Facebook.com slash MacGuffinPodcast, phone number 323-761-9842. We're on iTunes, Blip, Miro, Roku. Check in. Get glue. And we'll see you next time. Magneto can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. This type don't even try to buy the sun style. Mr. Spock can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. The board can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels alright.